Hello, Laura. Hello, Michael. I know I'm super early. That's fine. I thought I'd get on early in case people wanted to get on and talk. For I'm working on the, uh, sorry, I'm working on the uh, photo assignment right now. Yeah. Very good. I'm going through some of my, I'm going through some of my old photos of when I went on, uh, when I turned 18, I went on a big road trip mm -hmm. to Colorado just by myself. And I have tons of pictures that I never really did anything with that I love. So I'm looking through and like turning them to black and white on my phone just to see how they look. And they look really, some of them look really cool. I haven't done that before. Yeah. And it's really yeah. neat to do. You know, when you call up a memory, every time you call up a memory, it gets altered because it gets altered via the time you call it up. So like you're feeling nostalgic or you're at a party or whatever, it kind of gets hooked with that too. Yeah. So they don't, they don't exactly stay static. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it is. And that's value added for your painting because you're you now, I don't know, when was that two years ago you did that? Yeah, two or three years. Yeah, so, and now you're a different person and you're calling that up and you have new memories and you have what's going on now. Mm. And that's a lot of value added that could go into a painting. That's cool. Yeah, I, I really have haven't thought about much about my painting. There. I haven't thought about it. I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. You don't have to worry about it yet. I know. Yet. Yet. I'll figure it out. So I have a question. So you said on the uh, syllabus that you wanted the pictures a certain dimension. Yes. Do you know the easiest way to get that done? Well, I was able to do that on, um, I was able to do that on in the cropping tools on the phone. But ask this again when everybody gets here, okay? Because what's more important is that that's that rectangle. And, yeah. and so mm -hmm. if yeah. you say, yeah, so if you say it's a certain size, it'll usually let you lock in a proportion or it'll let you crop and it'll let you see what the dimensions are. And then all you have to do is get it close to that right size in that, in that, uh, to go onto your, your sheet. And it has to be not exactly that same rectangle or not exactly that size, then a little bit bigger is better. So you're not seeing some strange line. You know what I mean? Okay. You know, I'm having you guys do that. Like you crop them to size. But truthfully, I don't crop things when I'm taken for a reference. I just kind of visually do it when I'm, you know, when I'm playing around with it. So it's it's more for um, an exercise for you guys. Yeah, I should I should know how to do it anyway. So I like I need to learn how to do it. But I'm not going to. Uh, I am really not going to get on anybody's case technologically because. Uh, you're not going to be holding up a ruler to the centimeter, making sure that. No, because I'm having my rear end kicked right now by this thing. So, uh, and there are more important, you know, matters. Even like, you know, people are like, they're well, they got to print it out on photo paper. No, you don't. Yeah, you, you can print it out on anything. You know what I mean? It's just a, it's like, it's a springboard. That's all it is.
I'm going to be, I'm going to be back in a minute. I, I, I have to go get my Diet Coke to start. You're totally good. Okay. Is that van? Alini, how are you? Hello, I'm doing well. How are you? Good. Hmm. Hello, Magali, how are you? 
Hi, can you see me? I can. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, how long I'll zoomed in. I'm good. I just tired again. <laughs> You are, you? I'm sorry. I'm good. I'm good. Nice, that's good. Miriam, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good. Victoria, hanging in there? Definitely hanging in there. All right. Danielle, you're... Yes? I had a question. Did you get my email from yesterday? Well, I probably did. <laughs> but it was just about the, the statement. That, yeah, that... oh yeah. I'm not going to grade them till tonight. Okay, sounds good. I'm looking forward to reading them. Okay. Oh yeah, I had a question about that too. So I submitted mine on Canvas, but did you want us to just email it to you as well? The little artist statement? Uh, or is submitting it on Canvas just enough? Well, you know, honestly, if I can get them on Canvas and I get used to doing that, then that's great. I'm just, uh, we're not gonna sweat it too much. I don't want to, um, I don't wanna like you guys turn something in and I miss it you know? Yeah. So that's a kind of a, but we're going to figure it out as we go along. When are you sharp people? Tell me how I adjust the size of the pictures here in the gallery. Is there a way to do that? I guess it's adjusting you as you show up. Hmm. Makes them smaller. Do you have Mac or Windows? It's Mac. It's actually kind of adjusting you guys So as you show up here. So, Raphael, you doing okay? Yes, sir. All right. The lab. Kylie, you're, you're doing well? Yes. Yeah. Kylie, you're here doing well? Yes, yeah, sorry. Okay. I'm just checking in with everybody here. Stephanie, you're here? I'm here. Okay. And somebody's name isn't showing up but they're here. Alex, you're here? Yes, I'm here. It moves you guys around too. It just switches them around. It's very interesting. Okay. Americus, you ready to go? I don't know if you got me, but I'm here. 
Yeah, I did. Okay. Now, as we get started, there's something I want you guys to do, because apparently I'm still technologically challenged on a lot of this. There on your control bar, isn't there a place for you to record this meeting? Yes? Yes, it says record. I think so, yes. Okay. So I'm, the last time, I don't know, it recorded in a funky format and lots of other stuff, um, like a gaming format, so which shot way over my head. Anyways, I'm trying to record this one to the cloud, but if you guys can just record it too, then let's do that, okay? It, says it does say ask permission uh, to record. How do I give you permission? <laughs> Also, too, I was wondering if you have already checked the emails for the statements because I had sent an email today, uh, earlier today. Um, I, I haven't. I, they're there. I just haven't looked at them. Okay. And I don't want you guys to sweat this. I'll look at them tonight. Okay. And if we missed, if we missed making a connection somehow, we'll take care of it. If okay. someone isn't using their mic, like speaker, like a, a, a what am I trying to say, headphones to listen, yeah. then they can simply just screen record the like picture of you or something. I don't know. Okay. Everybody got that? All right. So any questions before we start up today? We have a lot to do today, but if you record it and you can go back and look at it, that'll be helpful. I mentioned to you, you can have your paints out and be noodling around while I'm doing things too. Anybody doing that? You could have them in front of you and kind of play around too if you wanted to. So what we're gonna to do today, first thing is go over the assignment for the watercolor techniques. So there's 18 of those that you'll do. Each of them ends up being worth one point. All right. And there's a rubric there. When you look at the assignment, there's a rubric for how they'll be graded. And we're going to work on, on those today. Um, so being as it's easier than me jumping around, I just printed out that assignment and I'm going to so can you guys read that now? It's not in focus, right? No, oh, it's not focused. Why isn't it in focus? Now it's in focus. Yep. Yes? Yep. Okay. Can everybody read it okay? Yes. What All right. is that on? Pardon? Is that on a page? In the portfolio? It is. Okay. There's a page there. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I just printed this out and I put it underneath the document camera for today. Uh, it's not a comprehensive list. It's commonly used and there are many, many more. I'm going to grade you on uh, craftsmanship and completing, having it on time and just doing the proper technique. And what you're gonna find out, and you're gonna see some of this today, and even though we have a break next Monday and we don't come back until Wednesday, I'm gonna continue doing techniques on, on that Wednesday. Um, so you have a little time to do all of this stuff and a little time to do the color mixing chart and a little time to do the transparency chart. But we'll get started on it. Um, you're going to see that you kind of mix techniques some too, that they're not just pure. So you can have some fun with this too, but it's also having a, uh, that technique being uh, really dominantly used in the sample. Okay. Once you've thought about the uh, technique and mix some colors, don't worry about how it'll come out. Just follow the process. Okay, and so we're kind of experimenting. And in the end, if you don't get one that you like, well, it'll be easy enough to do another one to cut your sample out of. Okay, so, so you plan carefully and execute loosely. And 
the more you do this, the easier this gets to do. So you think about it before you do something. Okay, and then watercolor is kind of wild on its own, so that's why you execute loosely. And you'll see that each painting is gonna be like, that you put them in the samples, and you, you have that in the sample portfolio. Each, each little piece is kind of its own abstract painting. I did some that were representational, little teeny representational things, but you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to. It's probably better if you don't do them representationally, because then you're just into the technique. Um, manage the use of water. You, you're going to just get used to color more and more as you work with it. Manage the use of water, and we'll try and get around some of that today, because some things you're doing when they're really wet, some things when they're really dry, sometimes a lot of water in the brush, sometimes the brush is, uh, the, uh, the paint is really watery, so we'll just see. Sometimes you let the paper dry more before you go back in and do something. It's managing water. Uh, be patient. There's drying times. That's why we'll do this like a, a cooking show, and that's what I'm, I'll, I'll be showing you. So we'll be working on a bunch of them at once. Uh, paint big enough so that you have some choices, and we'll look at that too. So you'll make a little masking square, and then when, you're, when your sample is done, you can move that around and orient it whatever way to where you get the, the neatest little painting, okay? And have several going at once. Use the largest possible brush for uh, any given task. So it's real easy to just get into the tiny brush. You're gonna do your whole painting with a tiny brush, but you match the tool to the task. That making sense? And we'll keep coming back to it. So what I did was, uh, I'll do this. I just loosely did on the watercolor paper, wish I could get a little further back from this. I did, uh, a spot for each one of these techniques. So I got three sheets going already. All of those techniques are listed here and we'll move around on them during this class while I'm doing this stuff, once we get going. But first, so I printed out an extra one of the, let's see if I can get this to go. That's a little bigger now, isn't it? So I printed out one, one of the sheets that we're gonna use, and this is on, this is on that cardstock. It's hard to use the right side of your brain and use your left brain too. So this paper, I'm sorry, just to, uh, just to clarify, this paper is uh, cardstock, the one you're holding right now? Okay. This is, this is what I printed out. You're gonna do your samples on watercolor paper. Oh, but this, but is this particular paper you have right now cardstock? This is because I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut a masking rectangle and I want to show you guys how to use the knife. Okay. So here's this knife and I can tell you that the, the point on this is already dull. So I'm going to go ahead and trade it out. I have so many exacto knives. I'm looking over here and I know I got a nice sharp one. So Let's just play like I traded out a blade. All right, then you have, then what you have is your ruler, right? Your steel ruler. And more than anything else, we'll probably use this to like paint along. You can use it to measure too, to right? make your rectangles and things. It's got cork on the back, so it sits on top and doesn't move around a lot. Now, when we're, paint, when we're cutting this out for this mask, what I wanna protect is the outside, right? So I'm going to cover the outside with the steel rule. All right, now, a way of doing this, which is pretty good, is I'll make, I'm going to make a little indentation here. And you guys should be better at this than me because I have the shakes. 
I can still do painting, but I can't do quite the same kind of painting I used to do because I, I have shakes. So I got this stopping point here. I can feel it. And then I'll go at the other end and I'll stab it and start. And then I'm going to keep the blade at a low angle and I'm not going to be straight up and down here trying to trying to just drag the thing through. I'm going to make several cuts. Now the truth is if we went right past the edges on this, it wouldn't matter because we're just going to use it to find rectangles. So I just scored it, but then I can feel where to stop. And I'll make several cuts and to get all the way through it. Now, the more I have that blade at an angle, so it's like, it's just like an inclined plane there, the more blade is in the paper and the better it cuts. So then I'll turn this around. I'll do the same thing. And I've already got that started at that end, so I'm going to make a little mark here. Go in and give myself a stopping place. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to take several passes here. The first one just kind of scores it and then you start cutting through. Also, I was cutting on cardboard. I don't know if it's the back of a sketchbook. So you can see, don't cut right on a table that you're ruined. Don't cut on something that's going to immediately dull the blade. Okay. And I go over here and I do this side and I'm just turning this thing around <clears throat> to make it as easy as possible for me to cut. So for me, drawing down, drawing down like this is the easiest cut. Okay. And I got one more cut to make and it should be both started and stopped there. So I'll just go back in and I'll Now, let's see if I have to do anything else. So we come back here and just clean it up a minute. And then I have this nice rectangle or this square, excuse me. And then what you're going to do is um, you're going to use it. So here's a, there's a sample. Okay. There's a sample of bloom right there. All right. Then I can go in here and I can move this around. So I like that sample pretty well, but I can find whichever one I like. Where's the little painting that I really like? Then I just draw it off with a pencil and I cut it out and I glue it down to my, to my sample sheet, okay? Now, I went ahead when I drew these sample sheets, I mean, when I, I'm just throwing stuff around the studio here. Welcome to my world. I put all the ones that are going to go together on the same page. And so I'll make a sample like this big that I'm just going to get a little square out of. Okay. And I did it that big so that um, I put them all on the same page because one of the things I wanted you guys to do was make a nice looking page. So as you go through here, you can see when you want to change colors or do something different so that when you're done, this whole page will look together, will look good together. So you'll, you'll paint all these, you'll cut them out, and then you'll glue them on that sample sheet. Making sense? Okay, so we're going to try and plan some of this. So uh, those sheets are watercolor? They are. These are watercolor sheets and I just drew on them in pencil what I'm going to paint. And we're going to, I'm going to work on all three of them today as we go along. And so, wouldn't you know it, I started out here already without something I needed. So I'm going to go back. You guys, 
think ahead though when you do things, all right? Because I want to start out with the saran wrap technique. And this paper, this paper is the paper that we're that we have in our bag, right? Like right, paper. watercolor paper. Okay, cool. Cold pressed, 140 pound watercolor paper. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. But I wanted to start out with this technique first. So I'm finding the sheet that I have. Saran wrap on. Well, I'm going to do the salt technique first because it's wet, all right? It's a wet one. Now, I could do this with a single color, but I'm going to go ahead and, and use more than one color because uh, just because it's more interesting. And so I'm giving myself. Can you put that in a little more focus? Make you crazy, won't it? Let's put this brush out here so then you'll be able to see when that's in focus and the thing's in focus. I'm trying to do it off of my writing, which is already shaky. That's in focus, isn't it? Perfect. Okay. All right. So I'm up here on this salt, and you can see that's a lot bigger than that than that square, and it's it's wet. And I'm going to go ahead and mix another color with this. All right, so we'll just see what happens. There's some blue. Let's do something else with it too. If you're like me, you're going to have to clean up the paint trays pretty frequently because I mess them up. Okay. All right. That's so is it a particular technique or it's just like you're just showing? It is a particular technique and it's listed in on those pages. Oh. So I'm now sorry. it's called salt. Oh, so okay. Now I'm going to, you can see it starts making a change there already. So I put salt on there and it's just because it, it's really, you know, it's sucking up the water that salt is. And, but I have to now, I have to let those, I have to let that, that technique is done, but I have to let it dry completely. And then I will uh, be able to brush the salt off of it and cut out the technique. Okay. So now let's do a, uh, We'll start on another one here. 
I'm going to start on, I'm going to see if I can't get a little bit of something started on all of these, okay? So That's pretty. Yeah, it's always fun. Uh, so I'm just using a little bit of masking tape here and I'm going to brush some of the salt off of this, <laughs> the rest of this. And you could think of this as being like this is a negative painting too. This is one way I'm masking it. Generally speaking, when we say negative painting, we're making that white or whatever we preserve becomes an object. So we're, we're painting around it. So that's getting started and I'll do some more masking on this as we go along. So now I've got that color going on, so I should probably do something else. All right. And so I'm going to start out with some of this. Um, I'm going to start out with some of this yellow green here. You can see my brush was dirty. And I'm going to add something to it. This will be in contrast. So I'm, this is some of that um, raw umber. And when we let that when we let that dry, we're going to come back and do some other masking over the top of it. So we'll we'll do several layers of masking on this. So now we'll go ahead and let that dry and we'll start working on something else here. Uh, okay, I know I got something I gotta, I've got i got to do. So um, I'm going down to this corner here and it's dry scratch. And so that means that's gonna have to be dry before so we can come Yes. Um, so you let that dry and apply more tape, apply more colors, and you just do that over and over until you are done with it and then remove yeah. all the tape or? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Those sorry, things I'm, are dry. I'm, a, I'm a bit confused. Like where, where, what file is this on? Like the instructions or the technique or whatever? They're all in that portfolio. Oh, so like it's, but it doesn't there. really show you how to do it. It just like shows like the square and the technique. It doesn't show well, any. Direction. That's what that's what we're doing right now. Oh, okay. Oh, that's yes. Oh, okay. Also, yeah. if you go further down on the thing, like numbers twenty nine through uh -huh. whatever are how to do it. You know? oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, um, but you can you can always come back to it. And there's lots of videos online, and I've got a few up if I can ever figure out a way to where you guys. It says I want to come back and watch it, but it says it's recording. Because, yeah. but I'm not sure, like, because I went back on the cloud, like on the Zoom, and it doesn't really say any past recordings. So uh, I think it has to wait till it converts at the end. Oh, okay, okay. Like when I when I end the meeting, it will it will start converting that file. Okay. And that'll be on that'll be on Canvas. Yeah, that's my that's my sincere hope. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna mix it instead of I was just grabbing them off of the palette, so I'm gonna go ahead and mix something. Um, where it's a mixed color on the palette and then I'll put it out. So I got some of this crimson and some of this, uh, some of this yellow ochre I put together and I'm going to put it out here and we're going to have to let it dry. It makes a nice kind of an orangey color and I'm going to have to let it dry before we can do this other stuff. I want to have some darker things here. Now some of these colors some of these paints, they will, um, they'll stain the paper. They're staining colors. And most of these colors that we have, because they're not, they're, they're good, but they're not the best. Um, they're made from dyes and dyes are, are staining type thing. So we're going to let that dry now, all right? Looks like an angry sky or something there right now. Uh, I can go ahead and do this wet scratch right now. This one's right here. And somebody give me a color. I'm going to pick on somebody here. Uh, let me see. Zena, give me a color to use. Did you say violet? Oh, okay, violet. 
<laughs> okay. Sure. Good idea. And the way this works is, for some reason, I really got the shakes today. So I put down some violet. And this is going to be a little harder to see for the moment because it's reflecting. It's reflecting a lot of light. You're seeing that white. And so I'm going to, I'm going to alter it. I'm going to add some uh, Prussian blue to that violet. Okay. Oh, uh, one question. Yes. How many um, inches did you measure for each square? On the thing I'm doing right now? Yes. I just cut it into sixes so I'd have a nice big area. Thank and then the, the little square, I think is two inches by two inches, but I'd print it out and cut out one of those things. Okay, so now I'm gonna do wet scratch and I'm gonna use first, I'm gonna use a knife. Now I'm not gonna cut, but I want you to see what happens here. And what it's doing is, I'm actually making a furrow. I've cut a crease into that paper and it is just going in there. Now you have to be careful. You don't have to be as careful if you're using a little better paper than we are, but this paper is really soft and it will start to tear pretty easily. So you can see that that could be pretty handy for lots of things. So like sometimes if I'm doing a sky and I want a, like a telephone line or something in the distance, then I just make a crease through there and it's automatically a color and a value that goes with the sky and it's telephone line. This is actually a brush comb like, like uh, painters use to clean their brushes and let's see what happens. I got to do this while it's wet. So I'm kind of running out of my ability to do it here a little bit. So you can see the knife is more pronounced. So we don't necessarily have to use the knife on this technique. We can use anything to like make creases in the Yeah, anything that will make, make a furrow. Okay, now it just so, ha I don't want to do, this is negative painting down here and I don't want to do that right at the moment because I got so much stuff here. Um, but there's wax resist right here. Now I have a watercolor crayon, which is just wax, but you can use a candle, a birthday candle, anything, it'll work. And it's, all it's doing is the difference between water and, um, you know, this waxy thing. So it, it helps protect the paper. I use this occasionally. You might use this, it's kind of easier on rough paper in a way because you've got these highlights and I might use it to, to kind of keep some highlights that are gonna be like water or it might be shimmering light on leaves of trees or something like that. So, I mean, it, it has practical purposes. Now, let me see, Danielle, give me another color. I put down my wax here, but give me a color to lay over the top of it a little. Uh, let's go with brown. A brown? All right. Now we have burnt sienna, which is real handy. And I'm going to do something with it. So you seem very positive about that, and we're going to go with it. So you'll gradually see the, the wax start coming up. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm a college professor and this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and add some black to this. I don't ever use black paint, just as black paint, but I add it to other paint because it does things. It does some kind of interesting things. If you just have black paint, it kind of is kind of dead. But 
if you put it with another color, it makes really nice kind of lustrous tones. Okay, so I don't know what that might be useful for, but that's wax resist, okay? So you, you guys can see if you plan a little bit, these go pretty well. It seems pretty daunting, 18 of them, but it's doable, okay? All right, so this is like the cooking show. I'm putting this over here off to the side. Uh, Mr. Massey, I didn't really hear what you said about the masking technique. Is there like, we just put a couple layers of the masking tape on, let it dry, and then remove the tape? Yeah, yeah. And you can block it with anything. Like when we go, I'm going to go back and do some more on that. And I think I'm going to use, I have some sawdust here, which makes a very different edge. So you can mask with anything, you know. Uh, you, you know, try different stuff. Okay. Now, I'm going to do a very basic technique here, and it's in the nature of watercolor. So right here is wet into wet. And there's a lot of ways of doing this. You can wet the paper and then put paint into it. You can put down wet paint and have other wet paint and let it, let them go together. You can have wet paint down and then dump paint into that and they'll, and they will go together. So we'll try to do a little bit of all three. So I'm wetting the paper here some and my brush wasn't perfectly clean. So still got a little bit of that violet in it, but Give me a color here now. Let's we'll start, where are we gonna start out here? Magali, give me a color. What should we use? Um, green. Mr. Ha, he says green. A dark green, not Kelly green. Look at specific, will you? All right, Thanks. well I got our blue green and I will add some stuff to make it darker. I don't know. They don't tell you. They just call this blue green. It feels to me like a thalo, thalo blue green. It's also known as viridian green. Oh yeah, this one's viridian. Okay, so we got that going on. So we got it flowing into there. Now I'm going to dump a little color on top of this. Um, Julie, give me a color to dump in here on top of this wet color. How about yellow? All right. So I get some yellow here and dump it in and it already, it really starts going green. All right. And so then when those go together, that's wet into wet. Now, something you can see is some of this texture that is in the nature of that paint, okay? And the black actually makes stuff kind of granulate a little bit, but it's also the texture of the paper, all right? And there's something just healthy about doing this. This is really wet right here. And I'm gonna leave that alone. I don't know what it'll be like when we end. Okay. Um, so now I'm gonna go down here and do lifting. So I need to have a, a wash of something. So we're making a page here. Now, who am I gonna, who am I gonna pick on here? Zella, what color should I start with here for this lifting? For the what? Zella, what color should I start with this for lifting? Um, I've been using a lot of purple, so let's use purple. Purple. Now, is purple your favorite color? No, my favorite color is actually pink. Okay. Or So I put some of this down. And it's in my nature to not like anything just pure, sitting there pure. So I'm gonna add some ultramarine to it. I should have added some, I should have added some red to it. Now that, that looks good with that other one. We'll leave it like that. Now, 
for lifting. You can use you can use a variety of things. You could use a Q-tip. Truthfully, the brush, if it's empty, will lift paint. Like an empty brush is really like a uh, it's like an empty pump. So I could go here and I could pick up paint right there. I just lifted paint, okay? But it's common to use something else. And so I'm gonna use some of this. This is a tissue. Tissues are really wonderful because they are so absorbent. They're more absorbent than the paper towel, okay? Now, I don't know what that might be, but it's something. Okay, and that's that's lifting. We'll leave that there for a while. I can't do anything else with it for right now. Um, I'm gonna go over here now to stamp. Okay, and we're gonna start out on stamp here. And uh, Kylie, what color should we start out with? Uh, can we do pink? Sure. And what is pink in watercolor? So it's Good that you said that. Well, it's uh, it's red, basically, that is really watered down, so a lot of the white of the paper shows through. So we'll turn that into pink. and I'm lifting paint out of there with the brush. So is that pink okay for you? Yeah, it looks uh, good. Huh? It looks good. It's good? Yeah. Okay. Now, if we wanted to make this more of a coral, what would we do? Add orange? orange? Yeah. Yeah. Or orange. yeah, we could. So I'm going to just to get it going. And I love that color. All right, now. Okay. Now, I just wanted to have something to start, start with. So we got to let that dry. And then we're going to do some stamping on top of there. All right. And I'm going to get this other sheet out here that we're working on. Oh yeah, there's one I gotta get going here. We're gonna jump down here for a second too. This says tint right here. And the reason I'm gonna go down there is because it's gonna have to be really dry. Um, it's really gonna need to be dry before we do the tint. So Laura, what color should we start out with here? It's a tough decision, I know. Raphael, give me a color to start with. Um, uh, maybe red. Red, okay. I'm gonna go to this, this warmer red. Cool. I'm so sorry, I just realized I had my mic muted the whole time I was trying to talk. You're okay. They call this red, but it really is more of a, uh, well, it's still red. It, it's me? really moving towards orange. I don't know what it looks like on your screens, but it's not bad. Okay, so I got that going on and we're gonna leave that alone because we gotta let it really dry before, um, we can do the tint on it because we'll use that Chinese for white and we're going to do an opaque paint on top of that. But I'm going to go up to this next one, which is rag rolling. And instead of actually putting something down to start with here, I think I'm going to go ahead and just do the rag rolling to start with. Okay. And you can see we're kind of, we've been working here about 40 minutes, not quite because we had to get going on class. 30 minutes and it's kind of moving along nicely on these samples. Okay. All right. 
Now we're going to make a whole page. It's really handsome. We already got this red orange down there. Who do I pick on now? Uh, Stephanie, what color are we going to go with here? Your mic is off. You're right. I'm sorry. Um, I like that uh, rusty yellow color that's on there. Rusty yellow. It's like a not the full full yellow, but there was like a like a darker. This is it's old a, yellow. It's yellow ochre. That's yellow ochre. Okay. So you guys can't see this, but I'm mixing up some yellow ochre in the palette. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use paper towel for this. So I take the paper towel and I can kind of scrunch it up and do kind of things like this with it. All right. It's scrunched. And I go over here and I get into the paint. And if I got enough paint here, I can start. I need more paint. Uh, this is a big part of it. Always make enough paint. It's called rag rolling. And it actually works better with a rag because it doesn't absorb as much of the paint before you get it to the paper. I can't say that I use this technique a whole lot, but it's a pretty common technique. And the idea is to get the whole thing, the whole paper towel for, or rag wet. And then you, all you got to do is roll it along. I got to make more paint. I'm going to do this if it kills me. I just resorted to dunking the paper towel in the water. Okay. Not going to absorb it all now. This is a commonly used uh, technique in the theater for texturing things. I think we'll do better now. Okay. All right. So that's a useful technique for something. All right. You can make that color as dominant or light as you want to. And we'll do another couple of layers on it at some point. All right. Now let's do this transparency. And we're going to have to let things dry here too because. We have to wait till they're totally dry before we can do them transparently. So I've already goobered this up, but I don't care because it's just going to be a sample here. It may help it actually. So Van, what color are we going to start with here? I like dark green. Dark green. All right. Dark green. Was that last one called paper towel technique or? Rag rolling. Okay. I'm gonna leave that like that because we'll come back and we'll add another color. I can actually add another color right now if I stay away from that. I could let them bleed a little bit, but so let's see here. Victoria, what color should I add to this before we move on from this transparency? color is like a light pink. Okay. See what we got.
Will that suffice as pink? Yes. Okay. Looks kind of floral already. And I'm going to go here now and do bloom. Okay. And bloom is often thought of as a uh, mistake, but I don't know. I still like seeing them sometimes in watercolors and they're great in flowers. And what it is, you have wet paint. If you drop water into it, the surface tension of the water causes the, the pigment to disperse and it makes a kind of a weird ragged edge depending on the paper that you're using. So we'll do a wet into wet here and then we'll drop some, then we will drop some water into it. So who do we, who do we have now? Julie, what color should we start with? Hmm. Um, let's do, uh, purple. Julie, have you said purple every time? Are you the purple person? <laughs> no, I think someone else said violet before. Oh, oh okay. Uh, right. did I say purple? No, last time I said yellow. All right. Good. Well, that's, that's a compliment, actually. Okay, now I'm going to modify this and let something run into it wet. And I'm going to do something that's really duller and it's complement. Just see what happens. It may be real ugly. Okay. I'm going over here to this raw umber. Now, we're going to I could let that dry for a second here, but I'm going to go ahead and you can see I'm holding the brush here like this. And I just like let it splatter. And can you see it starting to bloom? You're seeing really reflections here, but um, there's places here it's kind of separating. Can you guys see that? Yes. And that's bloom. Okay. I kind of like that little bit of white left over there. We'll just see what happens with it. Okay. And when this is dried a little bit more, when it's dried a little more, I think I'm going to come splash a little more water into it. Okay. Now I'm going to go up. I'm going to, I'm going to go up here to, this is spatter and splatter. So I think the difference between spatter is that it's really fine and splatter is that it's larger and less uniform. Okay. And just because I don't want it to be on like no color at all, I'm going to do a really thin, I don't want it, I don't want it on white. But with transparent watercolor, you can thin it to almost nothing. For the spatter, did you add the water first or are you going to add them after? I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to put this down right here. Almost looks like a sky, doesn't it? And I'm going to let it dry. And then those, I'm going to really adjust the amount of water in the paint when I spatter and splatter onto this. If I did this while it's wet, which is certainly a technique too, I would get a different technique. You just figure out what works for what you're trying to do. Now I'm feeling down here, I'm feeling on this. And if you can, even though it seems dry, if it feels cool, it's not quite dry yet, okay? So I want it to be drier before I do some more transparency on that, just to see what happens, okay? Uh, okay, I can't remember what's over here. Oh, all right, so I'm going back to another. I'm going back to another sheet here, and we've got several to start. Okay, we've got sponge. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the paper white for this sponge technique, too. Now, sponge is another one where you have to have 
you got to have enough uh, paint going because uh, you'll lose a bunch of it to the sponge. So I'm going to make kind of a weird gray, brown gray. And I'm actually going to get the sponge a little bit wet before I start and then I'm squeezing it out because I don't want it to just soak up all the paint. And if you look on your sponges, they have a bunch of different, there's a bunch of different kinds of uh, textures on the different sponges. So there's sponge technique. You can see why it's frequently used for like foliage and things. And we're going to let that one dry a little bit. Then I'll come back and do some more. So when we go over the top of that, it'll also be transparency, won't it? So, okay, so we'll let that one dry some. You know what, I just put it in the wrong one. Well, it doesn't really matter because I'll, I'll, I would paste it down to the right one. Then I take a drink of Diet Coke and it's on the right side and my brushes and stuff are on the left side so that I try not to drink the watercolor water. Okay, and what have we got left here? I'll show you guys something I just did. So um, by moving this, not letting it be totally flat, you can see that I've changed some things. That's how wet that uh, bloom was. You know what? That's kind of drying out some. A little bit and then I just got rid of some water too. I'm going to add some more water to that bloom and let's see what happens. So I'm going to put some in when it was really wet. Now I'm going to put some in when it's not quite as wet. And it'll do some more. It's all managing the water. Okay. That spatter splatter is up here is dry enough for me to do something. So for the splatter, I'm going to use a regular brush. And it can be even, I can even be directional with it. And what I'm doing here is I'm hitting my hand. I'm not going like down with it or anything like that. I'm hitting my hand and it makes the brush go like this. Ooh, it makes the brush flip and that throws paint. It actually throws a little bit back the other way too. Okay, so there's a bunch of different sizes there, right? Now I could use the same brush to get spatter and it works pretty well, but a lot of times um, I, use a, I use a toothbrush because it's really, it's got these bristles that are perfect for this and it makes a lot more uniform, a lot more uniform spatter. So you start off of what it is that you're going to paint. Like I wouldn't start here. I'd get it to the right consistency. Now, can you guys see that? Yeah. And those are a lot smaller and more uniform, right? So splatter and spatter. Something that's really nice a lot of times for like textures on trees is to like splatter it and then drag. So if it's a big drop, then you, 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 you drag that splatter out. I'll do one of those here.
and you turn the paper around to the way you want it to go. So you can get things like that too. If you have it thicker, you can have a dot and a drag. It's, it's, a lot of it is managing water. Okay, who's got a question here? We're gonna go back to transparency and work on it a little bit. And so this is dry enough now. And I'm gonna take some of that red and see what happens. This is what's really in the nature of watercolor paint is transparency. So you try on, you try the colors out on a sheet that, or a, 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 you know, extra paper that you're not worried about, get it the way you want it, and then you, you put it down. Okay. But you can't see what you're doing. I'm sorry. I just laid down a big old swath of red paint and the underneath it was dry. And it changes things. And it's like we're laying down color filters and seeing through them. Okay. I'm going to, you know what? We're, we're actually doing okay today. You guys want to take about a, a 10 minute break? Go get a, a drink or something and I can answer questions if people want to stay here or you can take a break. We're doing okay. I didn't know how long it was going to take me to do this. All right, so we will be back at let's say 340, okay? So you can turn on your or video, whatever you want to, and be back at 3.40. And I'll be right here and we can we can talk and maybe you got some questions going on while we're doing this. A question. Sure. Um, so on, um, on Canvas, for each technique on each of the assignments, there's like a YouTube video. Um, like, I guess like, like that's, like, that's like a technique video, but I try to click on it and it says like, I know. Uh, it, this is what I'm working on. I don't know um, why. I put a link there, but, uh, but I, can, I, I have to get it solved. I could just look up on YouTube the same technique. Like that'd be the same kind of thing, right? Or like yes, uh, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. I'm doing the, uh, you know, different colors, probably a little different in different ways, but it's the uh -huh. same technique. Okay. There's like a zillion ways you can permutate these techniques. Okay. Then we can choose our own colors for each one. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. Just as long as we utilize the techniques. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. That's it, totally. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Massey, I have yes. a question for you. Yes. Going back to that masking technique, you said we can do that something other than masking tape. What do you mean by that? Well, I might put some cotton down because it has a really soft edge and I would paint wet into wet or like right up to that edge that I know is going to be there and then just kind of let that cotton change that edge and then I might just spatter over the top of the whole thing or something to where it's something really soft that is actually protecting the paper or you can do that with sand or you can do it with like with like anything you know you're just blocking the just masking off the paper in some way. Okay, okay. And then um, for the dry yeah. scratch, it's pretty much like the wet scratch, except you just let it dry before you make those creases? No, you'll see. It, it ends up being very different. Uh, when we come back to masking, I'll mention some other things. There are like masking fluids and masking, uh, you can get this kind of uh, uh, paper, you know, to to uh, just mask off areas. You can do it in a lot more. The airbrush artists use this stuff a lot. You know, they'll use. Okay, yeah, like little um, shapes of papers and stuff like that. Oh yeah, well, you know, you can you can get stuff cut to whatever you wanted it to be, you know, a stencil basically. Michael, I have some questions. Yes. Um, the first one is, um, so, 
last class you showed us the PowerPoint of a completed um, portfolio. Is there any way to find that on Canvas? Well, I put it there, but it seems to be hard to find. But didn't I didn't I email you guys that too? Did you? It might be under announcements. Yeah, uh, I got that the PowerPoint in an email. You did. Okay. 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 And then. Um, Okay, that's perfect. And then the other thing I was wondering was you wanted me to ask about the uh, proportions for the photographs again in class and I totally oh, yeah. forgot. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys, listen up on these photographs. Uh, people are having a little bit of trouble sizing them or whatever. Do the best job you can on getting that to that rectangle. And then what I would say is if it's not perfectly that size, that's okay. All right, but try and get that rectangle and then if you don't have it perfectly the right size, don't make it too small so you're seeing some kind of, you know, weird artifact, uh, half of a, you know, some lines or something. Just cover that square up, that rectangle up completely. Um, if you can make it that rectangle, that's great. It's, that's just practice for us on like making a composition. So um, I did uh make my photographs um those dimensions what i did is um put my photos into a google document and if you click on the photo in the google doc you'll be able to resize it specifically to the portions you want oh excellent And also one question, I was looking for on Canvas, but maybe I missed it, uh, for the chart like for this assignment with all of the techniques on it. Yes. I couldn't find it. Is it on there? It's in the files in the printout area. Yeah. Okay. Files, I couldn't find it, sorry. Portfolio files, yeah. Okay, thank you. So I looked through my emails and uh, I tried to look through Canvas and I still can't find that PowerPoint. Can someone straight up just email it to me? I will try. I'll make a note to myself to send you one. Because if you've already sent it to everyone else, then it's probably just something on my end. So if like another, like, I don't know, if anybody could just email it to me, that would be amazing. Is that your email, Laura Smith? Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll try to email it to you. All right, thank you. Thank you. I need to move this camera up. Well, more technical stuff. Okay, I just forwarded the email he sent to me to you, so let me know if you get it or not. Say that one again, please. The email you sent me uh -huh. uh, with the PowerPoint and stuff uh -huh. attached, I forwarded it to Laura's email. Okay. So hopefully she has that now. I got it. Thank you very mm -hmm. much. No problem. <laughs> it's not finished, but hopefully... By the end of the semester, we'll be finished. If I expect you guys to do it, I suppose I ought to be able to do it. <laughs> so are you guys looking at a gallery view too? You can see all your pictures of each other. Can, nope. you, see the, can you see the desktop too? I just see you and where your hand is at with your paintings. Oh, okay. You can't see all these other guys? 
No, I'm on a tablet. I'm not on a computer. So if oh, I swipe okay. over, I can see individual okay. people, but then I can't see you. <laughs> okay. For the technique, wet onto wet, you said you can do wet paint onto wet paint, water onto wet paint, and so I could just put water down and put paint onto that, and that that's a technique? Well, you'd have a, it's just how wet you want to do the, the thing, but you could wet paper and then put paint down and let it run into each other. It'll do it. It'll just disperse and run into each other, wet into wet. And, uh, or you can actually put the paints, you know, to where they, you know, just dump them into each other where they do, you know. Uh, or I can like add water onto the paint. Yeah. Or would that be a different technique? Well, if you do it at the, well, frequently that turns into bloom, which is just a, a you know, sometimes that's a screw up. Other times it's <laughs> something you wanted to, something you wanted to do. We're going to go back to stamp and tint, right? Because you just applied colors and let them dry and then and then we can do the technique onto that. Yeah, okay. I actually have another couple to do. Okay. Just making sure I'm not missing nothing. <laughs> You're not missing a thing. I think my so, are really ugly. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so do you want us to print out like the assignments, the resources, all that stuff and put that in the back of our portfolio as well? Everything that's, that's uh, as a page there, I want you to put in the portfolio. And then you'll, if you ever come back to it, you'll have it as kind of a whole watercolor course for yourself. That's what I figured. I just wanted to double check before I go print out 20 pages. I might not yeah. have to. Well, I mean, theoretically, you don't have to. I'm only going to look at what you guys, uh, what you, you know, what you have to hand in. But um, I think you're going to like it if you have all of that stuff together. Yeah, I printed all of mine out on Monday and I put them all in um, the little black. Yes. Book that was given to us and they all fit perfectly it's like okay. the exact amount of like things i needed for the pages so well you can you can work nice and loosely and everything then you cut it cleanly and put it in there and it all looks really great you know and you can see exactly where you are uh in the class that was the idea it's time are we back? Everybody back? I'm going to switch cameras again here. And so I didn't like my splatter and spatter. So I 
made it more, uh, I made it more dominant. And then I went back on the sponge because it was pretty tepid also. Uh, I think you guys are going to do better stuff than I did here. Okay. Now, um, we're going to go ahead and do, are we ready? Everybody back? Alex, are you back? Yes, I'm here. Stephanie, are you back? Yeah, I'm here also. Raphael, you're back. You guys turn your cameras on so I can see you for a second. All right, thank you. So I'm going to go ahead and do the dry scratch now. So the wet scratch did this really nice kind of furrows and things. Okay. Now the dry scratch is actually going to the paper and um, you can't get a like a nice little true line with it like you do with wet. Okay. But so I use this for like tops of waves or something frequently, but, or just a highlight on something. Like I'm doing trees and it, I don't want to put white paint back in there. I mean, you can, but a lot of times I just go back and I'll just, I'll scratch. And you can do it whatever direction you need to go. Okay. So you can see that's a pretty good technique too. It shows up really well. Um, one of my very favorite probably my favorite watercolor painter, uh, Andrew Wyeth, would use really heavy, rough paper, which is what I like to, and he would beat the hell out of it. So he'd scratch on it and scrape and do all kinds of stuff to get whatever it was he was after. So that's dry scratch, okay? That's a shooting star, okay? Okay. Um, Where were we now? Well, I'm going to go back and work on the, I'm going to go back and work on masking again now. Okay. Now we could use more tape or we could use something else. And I'm looking for my, I'm looking for my sawdust. I have a can of sawdust. You wouldn't think you'd lose that. Okay. Well, you could use anything. You can think about like the difference between hard and soft. And no more than I did there. Let's just see if, if you could get a, uh, an interesting little painting out of that. It's kind of interesting on its own. Okay. And we masked to get that. I'm going to go ahead and brush the hand off. And that's a useful technique. You can kind of get hung up on techniques, but it's, it's uh, useful. All right. Um, negative painting. I'm going to go ahead and do negative painting now. All right. Negative painting is where it's usually you're making an object and you make that object appear by not painting there. <laughs> okay. So I'll use, I'll try and use a couple of techniques here.
And I'm going to go ahead and use, uh, so it's two techniques. So can you see that as like a clothesline or something with a couple of sheets on it? So that's a little bit different than just leaving the white. That's actually making two things. Okay. Negative painting. All right. Isn't that sweet what watercolor will just do? Let's look for a little painting on the salt. I'm just interested now. You could find something there. Wet scratch. You see these little white things? Ooh, move over, Michael. I she was out of focus or something. This is because of the paper. That paper is soft. So you have to be very careful with this paper. Other paper is a lot tougher. Okay. Now, I didn't mean to do it, but I kind of blotted our negative painting. Didn't really hurt it, did it? Still close on the line, that's kind of interesting. All right. All right, Let's see what else we got here. Anyways, you guys are getting an idea that if you put a big enough, uh, put a big enough area out there, you can find a little painting there. I feel confident you can get a better sponge painting than I did there, but you know, what the heck. Uh, that almost looks like granite or something. I don't know. Certainly it could be like stone. So there's the bloom. You want it dominated by purple, dominated by brown, you know. Uh, I really need to do a little more with the transparency. That's okay, and it's working transparently, but it feels a little bit meh. Okay. What were we going to do down here? I can't remember. Oh, this one we're going to do tint on, I think. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do this now, all right? Tint. So I'm not doing this on the, I'm not doing this on the palette. I'm going to do it on the paper so you can see it. Um, come on, come on. So. I'm going to do tint when we come back because I don't have any Chinese white right here. All right. Uh, we'd have to wait till it's dry and then we're going to make an opaque paint and put something over the top of that. All right. So we're getting there. Um, let's see if the lifting, if there's a little painting there worth looking at. It's subtle, but it's, it's kind of nice. It could easily be in a sky or something. Uh, here we go. Here's our, here's our wet into wet. And we've got a lot of things going on. <coughs> I don't know how well that's coming across on your, on your, um, screens, but I really like those colors. Okay. Oh, we got to do we have to do 
um, stamp. All right, and stamp is just like what it sounds. Sponge is actually a stamp technique, but it is so commonly used, the sponge, that it's part of a watercolor kit most of the time. So you could stamp with anything, foam stamps, uh, you know, bottle caps, uh, anything, your finger, you know. Okay. I was using my finger as a painting tool. Generally speaking, when you think of stamp, you're letting it take a particular shape. Okay. Here's an eraser. Ooh. You might want to, you might want to, um, for instance, you might be making a brick wall. You can do that by stamping. That might be the right way to do it. A lot more so than painting it. Although you could use a flat brush and paint also. Okay, so stamp is just anything you use. If I wanted to make something that was a true circle, I'm probably not going to paint it. You know, I might, but I'm more likely going to stamp it or use a stencil. Okay. So stamping technique. So that had a little wet paint left in it, so I just drug it out. Uh, and that's an improvised tool. Let's let's go over, let's go up here and do a um, improvised tool. And that can be anything. So brushes are great, but they're not the only way of. This is for improvised tool. They're not the only way of applying paint. So. You can find anything, anything that you that you like. I mean, truthfully, the using the paper towel is an improvised technique. Using the knife to paint with is an improvised tech, you know, improvised tool. That um, so whatever you find, whatever works. One thing I can tell you about brushes is that they're soft. So when if you want to make a sharp turn the brush doesn't do it as easily. So find a tool that works the best for what you're doing. Okay, the brush, because it's soft, every time you turn, it bends, all right? So sometimes, like here, I'm gonna use something. So I just dipped it in water. Here's a pencil, okay? Is pencil a watercolor painting tool? Well, it is. And I just dipped this thing in some paint. And it's a lot more um, easy to accomplish making lines like that with a pencil or something sharp than it is with a brush because the brush will want to flex and get thicker and thinner and curve. And with this pen, I can, I can come straight off of there. So that look kind of like branches. So whenever I'm painting branches, it's rare that I use a it's rare that I use a brush. You know, for trunks and things that are big, yeah. But when I get out to doing branches or something like this, this is just a better tool, okay? Now I can't paint a whole big area because, well, that brush, uh, that pencil is not really absorbing any paint. It is just, whatever I got on there is what it'll, what it'll do, what it'll work with. So improvised tools. Um, and there's, you know, I get in trouble for this, but, you know, there's like a lot of stuff in the kitchen or in the, uh, 
like in the bathroom brushes or things like that, like I get in trouble then because, you know, I've taken something important and turned it into a watercolor tool. Actually, I'm supposed to even kind of behave wearing this shirt. <laughs> I get paint all over everything. So here's here's the brush. That's probably it's not known that that's even missing. Okay, not known. Okay, what can I do with it? Well, I can do something like that. That's helpful. If I had enough paint there, I could roll it also. Okay, here's one that I really like is uh, really ought to clean the studio up more. Um, so a pipe cleaner. Well, it, it is a brush actually, isn't it? But you can do things with it that are really great. So for instance, I might do something like this. I've got some Oh, grass I want to paint or something like that. So I might take another piece of paper here and I know I want my grass to be along this line here. Well, I don't want to lay down paint there like that because it's going to get, it's going to get messed up. So what kind of grass I'm making here, all right? I'm going to give myself some, I'm going to give myself a reservoir of paint here to work with. Then I take, I take this guy and fold it whatever way I want to. And then I just grab some of this and I just I can make some really nice subtle grass. This is this is so it's handy, you know. That's a tool. All right. Improvised tool. Now what we actually have left that we haven't touched at all is a flat wash and a graded wash. And I'm going to wait, even though those are very basic, those are very ba basic techniques, I'm going to wait till we come back because they demand a little more time. They're very, they are like the most used techniques, but they require more time. The rest of these, you can really just have fun and work on those. So when I've got some tint in front of me here, when we come back on Wednesday, some Chinese white, we will move on to the, we'll move on to the uh, color mixing chart, color transparency chart, and these final techniques, which are graded wash, uh, flat wash and tint. Okay, making sense to you guys? Yes. Okay, and I'll stick around here for a, oh, let me do this. I'll stick around here for a minute for questions. Anybody got a question here before we go? Who was painting along? Raise your hand if you were painting along. Okay, Zella, did you make any textures already? Did you make any already? <laughs> Sorry. I did this little salt one, but yes. then I also was kind of messing around and I did this whole page. There you go. 
See how, and see how, um, if you just let yourself go, the stuff kind of takes care of itself. Okay, who else was paint, painting along? Okay, Magali, did you get any, did you get any keepers? Yeah, I kind of did this, but I still have to like, I don't know. The, for the salt one, like this one, um, would we have to take off the salt once it's dry? Yeah, you brush it all off. Okay. Okay. Now, now make these beautiful, right? <laughs> no pressure. Make them beautiful. Who else was Who else was painting? Some of you guys I can't see, so I don't know if you were painting or not. Your cameras are off. Uh, I was painting. Yes. Well, did, did you get the, it first? Yeah, the uh, splatter one. Yes. I like you that like, one very much. Do you like splatter? That one's the easiest one, so yes. I love splatter. Me too. It's so free. If For you sure. Said, if you sit next to me painting watercolors, you're going to have blue in your hair. You know, it's just going to happen. Okay. Everybody set then? You got some things to work on between now and uh, Wednesday when we come back a week from now? And I'll, I'll keep working on being able to put a movie up or whatever. I don't know, it's bound to happen, okay? I'll just see you guys on Wednesday then. See you on Wednesday, have a good weekend. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, and uh, is this due next Wednesday when we come back? No, uh-uh. Okay. No, uh, I believe your photographs are. Okay, yeah. yes. Your, your, um, your statement was due today, and I believe your photographs are on Wednesday, but then I wanted you to be able to work on the samples and the color chart and the color transparency chart, so you have a little while, and then all three of those are due, and that's a, a more considerable amount of work. Okay. Okay. And so just the photographs, not the paintings of the photographs. No, we're going to okay. work on that. Sorry, right. just had to make sure. Yeah, we're going to work on that. Okay, thank you so much. You bet, thank you. Bye. You guys can email me or whatever if you have any questions. Okay. All right, uh, I have one. I have one more question for the water, the color mixing chart and the transparent chart. Will we do that next time? Or we're supposed yeah, to watch I'm the video? Gonna, yeah, I'm going to show you how to do them. Okay, perfect. And then I think it's just going to be like this because it's a lot easier if you just kind of come and go on those things. Mm -hmm. Because if you're trying to work really wet paint in those really little close areas, you're going to mess it up. You know, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. mean, some of you guys may are undoubtedly, I'm shaky and I, I would just screw it up. And even if you're not shaky, it's pretty easy to just get them all messed up. For sure, for sure. Alrighty, thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Sure. Um, I kind of struggle with being free in like in my art, right? Yeah. Um, so do you have any tips for that? Sure. Do you like music? I'm sorry? Do you like music? Do I do like music? Uh-huh. Yes. And do you ever go dancing? Yeah. <laughs> well, treat it like that. And don't think about doing paintings of things. Yeah. Work, work abstractly and think about, you know, just like put some music on and it, it has some things in common with dancing and, and let it go. Because what's your major, Magali? Uh, behavioral neuroscience. What is it against? Behavioral neuroscience. Holy crap. Well, no wonder you're very, uh, you're a very thinking um, person. I like painting, so I do painting on my own, but it's never, it's always like very clean, yes. not like not anything abstract. Yeah. Well, freeing up is, a lot of freeing up mm -hmm. is 
getting away from nouns because nouns are things. And so if you like a piece of music, you don't say, what is it? Well, what is it of? Now it's easier to say, what is it of with a picture? Because that's kind of how our brain works. We want to know not to step in the hole, you know, or, you know, over the cliff or whatever. But I'm very interested in neuroscience too, by the way, I am. Uh, anyway, so that's one way, like listen to music and think about doing a painting of the music. You know, who do you like? Who do you listen to? Um, I, would, I listen to Spanish music. Spanish? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, a big part of it is like getting away from nouns. Yeah. And language is this, not that. And this is a lot more nuanced. So a picture is worth a thousand words, but no picture is worth one word unless it's become a sign like a stop sign or something. So a big part, this is what I think, and you're the neuroscientist, so you may correct me. A big part of our brain is given over to language and a big part is given over to visual things. And this is somehow I think between those two, a lot of how we make sense of the world are our mechanisms. The language thing is a lot better mapped, I believe, than the visual thing. But um, all art and science is running into the brain right now. That's the, that's the crossroads. So, that's a way to try and free yourself up. So you listen to a song and you might ask, well, basically what color is that? What color is that song? This is a legitimate question. Is this helping? Yeah. It and don't, don't stress it, you know, really. You're thinking too hard. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question. I did this one. Would that be one, like, something? I don't know which one I'm looking at this here. One. Would that be one of them? Could I, don't, I, one I of don't see what that is right now. I mean, I can't see it as being one of the techniques. Yeah. So I you use it as my improv, yeah. but it's very, like, structured. Well, look at the PowerPoint. Okay. And... Um, Watercolor in its nature is, I think, is kind of loose. If you let it do what it wants to do. I don't believe in, I, I want to be in a conversation with it, not trying to conquer it. So what does this stuff want to do, you know? Yeah. And so you have to do that. You, can't, you cannot conquer it. It will beat you down, Magali. You will lose. You cannot, you cannot, it's futile. But yeah. it'll get easier. Yeah. <laughs> Put on music and go with it. Just make brush strokes and color to music. Don't worry about making a painting. And just kind of see where this stuff takes you a little bit. It's hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is hard for some this is very different than most of the training that you normally receive. It's like backwards. Does that help a little bit? Yeah, thank you. Sure, and just have fun, you know? And see a color you like, it, you can't explain that. Just like it, you know, and remember it. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Awesome. Thank you. Have a good weekend. You too. Bye. Bye.